could Boeing switch to side sticks for its next jet? As all of us aviation geeks know, Boeing builds airliners with proper yokes and Airbus builds them with side sticks. But could Boeing be about to switch sides? Could the next Boeing jet actually have side sticks? Stay tuned. Many people, myself included, have commented on how Boeing and Airbus controls compare against each other. Of course, Airbus also started out with yokes on its A300 and A310 models, but when it introduced the fly-by-wire primary controls, it also brought in the side sticks, and that happened in the late 1980s with the introduction of the Airbus A320 family. Now, you can find many articles and online discussion groups arguing the merits of one system over the other, usually comparing the Boeing 737s with the Airbus A320, but in general these discussions tend to be about fly-by-wire, not necessarily about the actual cockpit controls. Now, there is a lot to discuss when it comes to fly-by-wire, but it's probably a moot point for this video. And that's because, realistically, we can safely assume that Boeing's next aircraft will be a fly-by-wire design. Remember that the last two aircraft that Boeing designed from scratch were the 777 and the 787, and both of them are also fly-by-wire. As we've seen in previous videos, whenever the next Boeing mid-size aircraft comes, it will face stiff competition from Airbus. And this is because Airbus could re-wing and resize its Airbus A321 faster than Boeing could launch and put to market this all-new aircraft. And if you want to know more about that, check out this video that I recently did about it. The point is though that fly-by-wire does have some advantages when it comes to weight reduction of an aircraft and also the distribution of this weight. Boeing is going to want to ensure that its brand new design is as competitive as possible and they will definitely use every technological trick in the book to achieve that. Fly-by-wire is something that they already know how to do and will therefore definitely use it. However, Boeing's current fly-by-wire aircraft, the 777 and the 787, both have yokes, not side sticks. Boeing has been quite vocal about the advantages of having yokes in the cockpit, even for fly-by-wire aircraft. You see, yokes are mechanically linked to each other so that one pilot can see and feel the inputs of the other pilot and that's something that we, Boeing pilots, really appreciate as it gives us a direct visual and sensory warning if the other pilot is doing something they shouldn't. I personally think that it's really helpful when training new cadets since I can immediately see if they are, for example, overcorrecting during a maneuver. In practice, it turns out that it's very difficult to have such mechanical links with side sticks and there has been some tragic accidents where aircraft with side sticks have been out of trim after reverting to a different control law without much indication of this to the pilots. In an aircraft with conventional control like the Boeing 737 or even a Cessna 172, the pilots will feel that this is happening through the controls and they will also be able then to trim the aircraft accordingly. Of course, these are issues that Airbus and other aircraft manufacturers have thought about and tested extensively. And there are procedures to mitigate against issues like this, like oral and visual alert, for example. Airbus spent a lot of time developing its fly-by-wire system and side stick controls. And with time, its procedures to mitigate any issues have gotten better and better, making sure that the pilots can now pick up on these warnings during any type of emergency. So, if Boeing has stuck to yokes until now, even for its newest, latest technology designs, why would it consider a switch to side sticks? And are they doing that? Well, I will tell you everything about this after this short message from my sponsor, who makes it possible for me to create these type of videos. Are you planning on doing some traveling this autumn? Maybe doing a business trip to some really nice exotic place? Well, if that's the case, make sure you're using NordVPN, today's sponsor, an app that will allow you to access all of your favorite content, but also make video calls no matter where you're traveling on the globe. With NordVPN, you will enjoy amazing internet speeds, but it will also help you to browse more safely on public Wi-Fi, such as train stations, coffee shops, airport lunches, or even your hotel room. When I fly abroad, which I do fairly often, I have extra confidence knowing that NordVPN is helping me protect my most sensitive data, like credit card information and email addresses from people who's trying to snoop in on them. To choose a new server is really quick. You just open the app, choose on the map wherever you want to be virtually located, click on it and you're connected within seconds. It's really easy. And you can choose from more than 5,400 servers in 59 different countries. 
So, if you are interested in getting a fantastic exclusive deal and start to surf more securely, well then click on the link in the video description below, which is nordvpn.com slash mentor now. And you really have nothing to lose because NordVPN has a full 30 days money back guarantee. Thank you NordVPN for sponsoring this video. There are now newer designs that seem to eliminate most, if not all, of their drawbacks. Again, these potential issues are the dual input problem, the out of trim problem, and also the fact that the response of the controls should change when the aircraft is flying at different speeds to give the pilots a bit better feel. These newer side stick designs aren't just sitting on the drawing board or in development labs. There are currently aircraft out there that are already flying with newer, very interesting side sticks who are referred to as active side sticks. The first aircraft to use them are Gulfstream's latest business jet models. In these aircraft, Gulfstream uses a system designed by BAE, a company who already had experience making side sticks for military jets. In these new Gulfstream jets, there is no mechanical link between the two sticks in the cockpit. However, the side sticks themselves have electric servo mechanisms. These mechanisms link the two sticks electronically, so when a pilot moves one of them, the other side stick moves the same way. If one pilot touches his side stick while the other is flying and starts making inputs, then both pilots will feel resistance in their controls just as if the two were mechanically linked. That's basically mimicking the feel that Boeing pilots would be used to with their yokes. All of this might sound a bit familiar to you if you're a computer gamer, you will probably have heard of force feedback joysticks. These use a similar principles. And by the way, don't call the side stick joysticks because there are some pilots out there who might be really sensitive to that. But if you think that those gaming devices were the first application of this technology, well, then that's not entirely true. Professional full flight simulators for aircraft like the Boeing 737 have been using this type of technology for decades. Of course, the yokes in these simulators are often mechanically linked, just like in the real thing, but to get certified for training, these simulators must emulate the aircraft, including the external forces on the controls, which they do using a system called control loading, which is similar to that kind of system that you have in the force feedback joysticks. Anyway, going back to real aircraft and Boeing's future choices of controls, the good news for side stick fans, that is, is that there isn't just one company making active side sticks today. In addition to Gulfstream supplier BIE, there is also Raytheon. Now, Raytheon is an American company who now owns a subsidiary in France originally called Ratier Figerac. This is the same company that has made the side stick that Airbus uses. Today, or perhaps we should say until recently, this company was also supplier to Russian Sukhoi, providing the side sticks for its superjet and also they supplied the Russian Irkut with side sticks for the MS-21, which you might know as the MC-21. Since Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the future of the MC-21 and the Sukhoi superjet are quite uncertain. But interesting for this story is that the configuration of the MC-21, which Russian authorities certified at the end of 2021, had active side sticks. If the MC-21 actually enters service, it will become the first airliner to have active side sticks as standard. So, could the next Boeing aircraft use these active side sticks as well? Could these developments finally convince Boeing to change its mind? Well, active side sticks seems to solve the dual input and out of trim issues we discussed before. They can also vary their resistance to pilot inputs to account for aerodynamic forces at different speeds. Plus, the sticks can move when the aircraft is on autopilot, visually showing the pilots what the aircraft systems are doing, just like the yokes do, and therefore satisfy Boeing's kind of pilot-centered philosophy. Plus, side sticks have other advantages, which is why Airbus and other use them in the first place. Compared to yokes, they save a good amount of weight, and it's just easier to install two side sticks in the cockpit than two floor-mounted yokes, along with all of the necessary mechanical connections that they need. In terms of ergonomics, side sticks may also allow pilots to reach other things in the cockpit a bit easier. For example, Gulfstream took advantage of uh, the side sticks to put touchscreen multifunction displays in front of the pilots, which is hard to do with a yoke. And crucially, as Airbus pilots love to point out, with side stick, you get room for a table. However, there is another caveat here that Boeing will have to consider before abandoning its yokes, and this has to do with pilot training. 
Even though the Boeing 777 and the 787 entered service decades apart, they have the same type rating, meaning that pilots who trained on one type can fly on the other type with just a shorter difference training. In theory, Boeing could try to give its next aircraft design the same type rating as these previous jets, even though the new aircraft is likely going to be a smaller jet. Now, this wouldn't be unprecedented. For example, the Boeing 757, a single aisle aircraft with the same cabin width as a Boeing 737, uses the same type rating as the twin aisle wide body Boeing 767. We really don't know how big Boeing's next aircraft will be, and if it really will be practical, could give it the same type rating as something as big as the Boeing 777X, for example. But even if Boeing decides against this, there are more type rating considerations that could keep them from making such a change. For example, Airbus has a common type rating for its four A320 single aisle variants, the A318, the 319, the 320 and the 321. Airbus also has a separate common type rating for its A330, 340 and 350 wide bodies. But even though the single aisles and the twin aisles have separate type ratings, pilots can benefit from shorter or abbreviated training courses when moving from one to the other because of the general similarity between the types and the cockpit layout. So if Boeing decides to do something similar to ease training requirements for its airline customers when its crew switches from one type to the other, it will want to limit the cockpit layout changes as much as possible. And obviously, giving pilots a side stick instead of a nice big yoke is a pretty big change. On the other hand though, Boeing has gotten a lot of criticism in the recent past for making design choices that focused a bit too much on training requirements instead of innovation, even for its newest aircraft, the Boeing 777X. So Boeing's choice on side stick versus yokes might seem obvious, but market demands could be the final deciding factor. Finally, it's worth noting that even though they don't have side sticks, Boeing 777s and 787s can actually have some side stick-like problems. In April this year, we saw a strange incident involving the flight crew of a Boeing 777, Air France Flight 11. The incident happened as the crew were on final approach into Charles de Gaulle Airport in Paris, France. Now, this is a very recent incident and we don't have a final report on it, but the French investigation authority, the BEA, has released a statement already. It seems like the two pilots believed that the aircraft was fighting their inputs, but according to the BEA's release, it shows that the two pilots were actually fighting each other and their yokes desynchronized. This is only possible if the pilots exert a force of 50 pounds or 22.7 kilos on the controls. When it comes, the final report will tell us exactly what happened here. Um, and it's likely that I'm going to feature that over on the Mentor Pilot channel. But for now, this shows that even without side sticks, it isn't impossible to have dual input issues, even with yokes. In any case, analysts seem to agree that Boeing really needs to launch its next aircraft soon, most likely in the next two years, if it is to remain competitive with Airbus. But could it decide to switch its control setup? What do you think? Will the advantages of side sticks in ergonomics, weight savings, etc. change Boeing's decision? Let me know below. Now, check out this video next, which I think that you're going to find really interesting, or check out this one. If you want to support this type of content, then consider joining my fabulous Patreon family, using the link here or in the description below, or get yourself some merch. Have an absolutely fantastic day, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.